The Eredivisie table makes for stark reading right now. At the time of recording, Ajax are bottom of the table and 25 points behind longtime rivals PSV Eindhoven, who are leading the way. A 5-2 defeat to PSV last weekend was Ajax's fifth league defeat of the season. Their only league win so far came against recently promoted side Heracles in the opening week of the season, while they never had previously been bottom of the Eredivisie table until now. Again, Again, at the time of recording, they are winless in 10 games across all competitions, which has actually never happened before. Their current five game losing streak in the Eredivisie is also something that, you guessed it, has never happened before. So I felt like they needed saving, and the only way I know how to do that is in Football Manager. So I fired up FM24 and got to work. Because I started a real world database, I would suffer the same problems that Ajax face in real life. The squad doesn't feel terrible, but key players like Mohamed Kudus and Davy Klassen will be leaving the club with their pre-existing transfers happening in game. On the other side of that coin, we do have several players incoming to the squad to bolster numbers. The most notable of these for me would be Josip Sotalo, who joins from Dinamo Zagreb, and Sivit Manzvark, who joins from Molder. We need a tactic to fire us to glory in this save, so I'll be using GYR's Master of Puppets tactic, which looks like this in-game. Once you add in the best 11 for the season, you can see my issues as three key players from that starting 11 will be departing the club. Competitions wise, due to poor performance in the league last season, we will be in the Europa League this year whilst competing for domestic honours in Holland. Ignoring reality with this, we are favourites to win the league, so this should be fun. Before we get into the results of season number one, I need to let you know about the sponsor of today's video, and that is Ultimate Champions. Dive deep into a world of over 93 officially licensed football clubs, strategize, select, and lead your team to glory with real world football impacting your team's results. It's just like fantasy football. Challenge friends in private leagues or players globally to find out who has the best football IQ. Prove your mettle week after week in this free to play game to win yourself weekly rewards. Get yourself started using the link in the description to come see if you have a better footballing knowledge than I do. Domestically, our performances in season number one were a bit chalk and cheese. In the Dutch Cup, we coasted through the second round with a 2-0 win over NAC Breda before crashing out on the road against NEC in the third round. Yikes. In the league, our form was largely consistent throughout and we found ourselves top of the table going into the final game of the season. We travelled to the test knowing that a win would secure an unlikely league title, but any other result could let Feyenoord in to win the title from under our nose. We took the lead just after halftime through Steven Berghaus, but then deep into injury time, disaster struck as we gave away a penalty, which Vitesse slotted in the 95th minute. I thought we'd choke the title, but it turns out Feyenoord couldn't beat Excelsior at home, so we managed to win the Eredivisie at the first time of asking. In Europe, I was expecting big things in the Europa League after securing our qualification. We were placed in Group B alongside BK Hacken, Brighton and Braga. In that group, we picked up four wins, one draw and one loss, meaning we finished top of the group and qualified for the knockout stages. That threw up a draw against Portuguese side Sporting, where we'd be on the road first. The host took the lead in the tie through Wonderkid defender Usman Diamande early, but the boys were able to battle back through a brace from Steven Bergwijn. Back in Amsterdam, Josip Sotalo extended that lead through heading home from a set piece before the team completely fell apart. First up, Trincao slotted a penalty before Pedro Goncalves fired home a goal to send the tie into extra time. Goncalves then turned provider to set up Geni, who managed to bag the winner. So all in all, not the best season, but the league win definitely digs me out here. Moving ahead, we have just shy of £27 million to spend on improving this team, so let's get to work. We were aggressive in the transfer market as I wanted to secure some of the better wonder kids in this year's game. I did need to raise some funds, so Georges Mikatudis left for Genk for just shy of £14 million. He was swiftly followed out the door by former Middlesbrough striker Tuba Akpom, who joined Al Itihad after failing to impress. We also cleared out Argentinians Geronimo Rulli and Gaston Avila, who joined Real Sociedad and PSV respectively. That allowed us to spend £60 million in this transfer window to bring in some of the game's hot talents. First up, we picked up French youngster Junior Krupi from Lorient for an initial £15 million. We also secured the services of French shot stopper Gahelme Restes from Toulouse for an initial £25 million. 
We then added Danish fullback Elias Jalert from FC Copenhagen for 10 million and added a bit of seniority with Macedonian international Elif Elmas, who joined from Napoli for just nine and a half million pounds. To ensure their development, I pinned Restez, Jalert, and Krupi into their positions alongside Ajax youngster Joro Hato. Competitions-wise, we return to the Champions League this season, but I feel this could be a transition year with some of these youngsters in the team. However, looking at the title odds, it seems like the bookies are still backing us as we're favourites to win the Eredivisie. Before we talk about the games, I have to update you on a January switch-up in defence. Owen Windahl swapped Amsterdam for Saudi Arabia and boosted our club coffers with a £30 million transfer, which allowed me to sign hot prospect Valentin Barco for an initial £5 million. The season opener was the Super Cup, where we take on Cup winners FC20. Things weren't exactly even here as we steamrolled them 4-0 with Borges, Souza, and Medic getting on the score sheet. However, this season, it wasn't a successful return to the Champions League. We were drawn in the league phase alongside Red Bull Salzburg, Real Madrid, Dortmund, Aston Villa, Porto, Man City, Dinamo Zagreb and Galatasaray. We did pick up wins against Porto, Zagreb and Galatasaray, but that wasn't enough to see us progress as we finished 25th in the league table. Domestically, our league form at the start of the season was patchy at best with the new players settling into the team, but we did manage to put together an unbeaten run from the middle of January all the way through to the end of the season. Whilst we were lethal in front of goal with an 80-plus goal difference, we did fall into second place in the Eredivisie, losing the title to Feyenoord by three points, but pleasing signs are here for next season. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom as this season we had a great run in the Dutch Cup. We coasted through the second round against lower league opposition before facing FC Groningen. This game had some scares in it for us as the lead exchanged hands several times before goals from Junior Krupi and Carlos Borges both bagged late in the game to send us through. This set up a quarter-final fixture with Sparta Rotterdam, which was much more straightforward as we were able to put them to the sword with a fine team performance to run out 5-1 winners. Marching into the semi-finals we went where we'd face PEC's wall, where two first-half goals from Berghaus and Van der Boomen booked our place in the final where we take on PSV. This was a huge game for the club as we fired out a statement of intent with goals from Nasi Unavar and Junior Krupi to secure our second piece of silverware this season. The balance is looking healthy for the summer as we have just under £43 million to take this squad to the next level. This summer window will be one of the most hectic that I have ever seen. We sold three players for a total of £87 million. Firstly, fullback Buona Salsa joined Al Nasser for an eye-watering £50 million before Jakov Medic joined them in Saudi Arabia, joining Al Ali for £15 million. And finally, we couldn't stand in the way of fullback Elias Yalert, who joined Real Madrid for £22 million. That prompted a £55 million spend on new players, with a bulk of that being spent on Buani from Nice, who joined for an initial £23 million. We also signed his Algerian international teammate, Chadi Riyad, from Barcelona for just shy of £16 million to bolster our backline. We then raided Mexican side Club America for Alvaro Fidalgo and Kevin Alvarez, with the pair costing us just £13.5 million. And finally, we picked up young Romanian fullback Andre Borza to be the backup to Valentin Barco in the left back spot. And to continue player development, I pinned six players into position for this season, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they all grow in their roles this year. Competition wise, we have the same four competitions as last season, but I'll be hoping for a much better showing in the Champions League. Domestically, we're favourites for the Eredivisie title yet again, so this time we need to deliver. We kick things off with the Super Cup as we took on last season's league winners, Feyenoord. They opened the scoring early, but the boys rallied around each other and fired home three goals in quick succession to open up a 3-1 lead in the game. Feyenoord did pull a goal back in the second half, but we were able to hold on to secure our second shield in a row. We were able to carry this form into the league campaign, where we were awesome throughout the season. We finished the season with 30 wins, 2 draws and 2 losses and a ludicrous plus 98 goal difference to win the league by 11 points, lifting the trophy with 4 games still to play. 
In the cup, we were able to continue this domestic dominance, blasting through the first two rounds, scoring 10 goals and not even conceding. This set up a quarter-final tie with Feyenoord, who we were able to brush aside at home thanks to goals from Krupi, Unovar and Van der Boomen to set up a semi-final tie with PSV. Valentin Barco gave us the lead from the spot early before Josip Sotalo put the ball in his own net to make the tie all square. I thought the tie was destined for extra time, but Carlos Borges had other ideas, bagging a late brace to send us to the final. This set up our second Dutch Cup final in a row, where this time we take on the go-ahead Eagles. This final was the Buani show, as the Algerian winger was basically unplayable, bagging a remarkable four goals in the final to see us lift back-to-back -back Dutch Cups and completing a domestic treble. So we are clearly the best team in Holland right now, but sadly, that did not translate onto the European stage. In the Champions League, we entered directly into the league phase where we met Dinamo Zagreb, Liverpool, Barcelona, Hoffenheim, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Red Star Belgrade, and Nice. We had a rough start to this campaign with three defeats on the trot, but picked things up with five wins on the spin to finish on 15 points and end up in 11th place in the league table qualifying for the knockout stages. In the playoff round, we were drawn against Portuguese giant Porto and would be on the road in the first leg. The boys didn't waste any time in the first leg as Junior Groupie opened the scoring within the first minute and the boys continued to pile on the pressure and ultimately ran out 4-1 winners in the first leg. Back in Amsterdam, things were largely the same as Groupie bagged a hat-trick this time in a 6-0 demolition, meaning we were comfortable 10-1 winners on aggregate. This set up a round of 16 tie with Liverpool. This will be a problem. The first leg was at Anfield, and I think the team put in a fantastic showing with Buani bagging a brace in a 3 2 loss, with Curtis Jones snatching the lead in the tie in the 92nd minute. Back home, Nasi Univar scored this fantastic solo effort in the first half, which was enough to send the game to extra time. This is where Liverpool's extra quality took charge as they added goals from Darwin Nunes and Cameron Carter Vickers, of all people, that saw Liverpool progress and us exit in the Champions League for yet another year. This season was definitely much better as we secured a domestic treble, but I still want to achieve more in the Champions League, so I'm not finished yet. We have £43.5 million to spend in the summer, and I know this squad has another gear to click through. To kick off Season 4, we were raided yet again by Saudi Arabia as Steven Bergwijn joined Al Ali for £50 million. We also shipped off winger Francisco Coenzao to Leicester City for an initial £7 million. I used that money to secure the services of a better winger in my opinion, as Michael Elise joined us from recently relegated Crystal Palace for £48.5 million. We were also able to secure the services of former Wolves midfielder Ruben Neves on a free transfer following his contract with Al Hilal expiring, so I was very happy to bring him back to Europe. Olise and Neves come straight into our best 11 and the squad is looking a lot more balanced this year, so I'm expecting another solid season. We have the same four competitions as last season and in the league we're 5-4 favourites to secure back-to-back -back Eredivisie titles. The season kicked off as always with the Super Cup where we took on Feyenoord and picked up where we left off last season, lifting the trophy with a 2-1 win. We continued our impressive performance in the league and strolled to yet another league title, securing 94 points and only dropping 8 total points all season. Our defence of the Dutch Cup started swimmingly with a 10-1 demolition of a lower league opposition before a rematch of last season's final in the third round where we took on go-ahead Eagles. This game went a similar way to last season's final with us running out comfortable 4-0 winners with Junior Krupi terrorising the opposition for the duration of the game. It was the quarterfinal up next where we take on lower league opposition yet again. This time, it was Michael Elise who bagged himself a brace in a 4-0 win without letting the opposition register a shot on target in the whole game. This set up a bumper semi-final fixture with PSV, which was very tight throughout, but I thought Valentin Barco had given us the lead with his late penalty deep into injury time, but Joseph Sotalo put the ball in the back of his own net to send the game beyond 90 minutes. Extra time couldn't produce a winner, so we went to penalties. Both initial penalty takers could not find the back of the net, but both teams settled into a rhythm before Jonathan Bamba saw his penalty saved by Restes to send us to the final. Now I have to tell you, this is one of the most ridiculous cup final performances or games you will ever 
C. It seemed like both sides forgot how to defend in this game as it had 12 goals in it. Luckily for us, we were on the winning side of this, running out 9-3 winners against Die Grafschap with several players grabbing braces in a mad victory. So that was another domestic treble secured. This time, what about the Champions League? We of course entered straight into the league phase where we were drawn alongside Juventus, Hertha Berlin, Atalanta, Porto, Lazio, Anderlecht, Napoli, and Benfica. It seemed like we were playing half of Serie A here. Results were amazing in the league phase as we won seven of our eight games to finish second in the table and qualify automatically for the round of 16. This would produce a huge test for us as we came up against English money bags, Newcastle United. The first leg was at St. James's Park and Creepy continued his fine goal scoring form, bagging inside the opening minute. However, Newcastle showed their dominance in the game, battling back to win the first leg 3-1, leaving us plenty to do at home. In Amsterdam, we put on a little bit of a clinic with Elif Elmas backing a brace before Michael Elise looked like he had booked our place in the quarterfinals. However, Callum Hudson-Odoi had other ideas scoring this lovely solo goal deep into injury time to see Newcastle scrape through the tie 5-4 on aggregate and our Champions League journey came to an end again. I feel like it's just fine margins with us missing out in these Champions Leagues, so I want to have one more season, everything or nothing, win or go home. Let's see what we can do in season number five. Going into the summer window, I will have £53 million to spend on this squad, so let's get to it. We raised some extra capital with a few outgoings this summer as Branko van der Boomen, Benjamin Teharovic, Skol Mushafri, and Carlos Bouges left the club for just shy of 20 million. On the incoming side of things, I spent big adding key options to our midfield. First, we signed Tim Braithrup from Bayern Munich for £33 million before adding Polish international Filip Rezic from Wolves for £41 million. And finally, I wanted some depth at the striker position, so signed Massinho from the United Arab Emirates for his minimum fee release clause of just £8 million. Our young core that we had put together had really come of age for this season, and we looked like a completely different unit in midfield, so I was ready to attack things this season, with our main goal being a deep run in the Champions League. Domestically, we are odds-on favourites for the league title, so we should be wrapping that one up comfortably. This season kicked off as always with the Super Cup where we would take on our rivals Feyenoord without ever actually getting out of second gear to lift this trophy for a fourth season in a row. Our run to the final of the Dutch Cup was pretty straightforward, beating Go Ahead Eagles, PSV, Fortunia Sittard and Feyenoord en route to the final with FC Volendam. In the final, Sivet Manswark opened the scoring for us before Michael Elise added a brace from the right wing to see us win the tie 3-1 and secure our fourth Dutch Cup in five seasons. It won't come as a surprise that the league fixtures were pretty easy for us, even with us going on a run from March through to the end of the season, where we won nine games in a row, scoring 29 goals and only conceding twice. We topped the league with 92 points, beating Feyenoord to the title by 11 points yet again, and Junior Krupi bagged 36 in the league, and he has turned into one hell of a player who could still improve even more. So that meant that we secured another domestic treble, but it was the Champions League where things got really interesting. In the league phase, we were drawn against Chelsea, Liverpool, FC Copenhagen, AEK Athens, Dinamo Zagreb, Sturm Graz, Inter Milan, and Dortmund. We again put in impressive performances throughout winning seven of the games with our only drop points coming at home to Inter. This meant that we topped the league phase table and qualified automatically for the round of 16 where we'd end up facing Liverpool. The first leg at Anfield was evenly contested and Liverpool probably should have got more out of the tie but things finished all square at 2-2. Back home, we were able to take care of business after Luis Diaz put the Reds in front in the first minute. Valentin Barco pulled us level before Buwani fired us into the quarterfinals after starting and finishing a swift passing move. It was more English opposition in the next round as we drew Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. The first game was at the Emirates and our lads took charge of the game with first half goals from Nasi Unavar and Michael Elise before Arsenal pegged one back through Declan Rice. Back in Amsterdam, Filip Rezic extended our lead early, but Arsenal battled back to get level in the tie with goals from Gabriel Jesus and Bakayo Saka to see the game go into extra time. 
The extra 30 minutes couldn't break the deadlock, so it would be settled via penalties, where our goalkeeper, Glehelme Restes, came up clutch in the end, saving penalties from Gabriel Martinelli and Jao Neves to see us reach the semi-finals for the first time in this save. German juggernauts Bayern Munich were our semi-final opponents, but yet again, the boys did not flinch. This time in the first leg, we were at home and Junior Krupe gave us the lead early before Joshua Kimmich pulled one back for Bayern. At the Allianz, Matthias Tell fired Bayern Munich into the lead, but we did not quit. And in the third minute of second half injury time, Buani lashed home a shot from a nice throw-in move to send the tie to extra time. This time, we were able to break the deadlock as Matthias De Ligt turned the ball into his own net before Brestria put the game to bed as Bayern pushed to equalize. This meant that we were in the Champions League final where we'd come up against yet again another English opponent and this time it was Chelsea. We'd beaten them in the league phase, so I felt confident going into this tie as we took to the field in a Champions League final for the first time since 1996. It was a really tight game, but Chelsea's ill discipline really cost them as they gave away two penalties and our boys didn't disappoint, firing them both past the Chelsea keeper. Junior Krupe added a third in the second half for good measure, but we went on to comfortably lift the Champions League trophy for a fifth time in the club's history. You can carry on this adventure with Ajax if you like. I will post the save files over on my Patreon. You can find the links in the description. And if you do like rebuild content, check out this playlist.